Okay, um, speakers, before we start, so here are the house rules, right? So every time any one of us is speaking, we need to mute our speaker. And then when you speak, you just unmute it. Okay. You ever been here for up? Yeah, I can hear you now. Wait, Can you hear me? No. Oh, I see. But then, like, I can. You so boil and mind you back, yeah. Okay. Yo, as well as well as no one's apart midday. You can get a sequel. Hey, so born. So, thank Go on, listen, give some dog. Go go forgive us. Say no seven. Mpumeza, hello. We are live. Hello. <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> all right. Um. Let's start the session, guys. I feel like the rest of the speakers will find us on the way. Um. Hi to everyone who's just joined us. My name is Kukulet Masangu. I'll be your host today on episode thirteen from Spaces. Today we are joined by our lovely speakers, and I feel like they will do the honors of introducing themselves. Uh, so, speakers, take it away. Let's start with introductions. I got a pick. Okay. Hello, guys. Good evening. Um, um, my name is Puelomu Zilamini. I'm a young farmer farming. I'm down in Gozulu Natal in a place called Winen. A well-known area for vegetable production, and yeah, then Pumezo, you can go now. <laughs> okay, thank you, Putram. Thank you, Putram. Um, Pumezo and Dimaka is from the Eastern Cape, but I'm farming uh, in the KZN Bainsfield area, close to Richmond. Uh, yeah, I'm a young farmer in the area, uh, qualified in crop production, hippie tech. Thank you so much. Uh... Mpumeza, can you just um just mute your mic once you're done speaking? Um, okay, on the okay, Munya. So we are doing introductions. So just introduce yourself, who who you are, what you do. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm an agricultural professional. I'm mostly a farmer, so I'm an agronomist and a farmer as well. So mostly I I deal with uh, farmers from Lanseria, and I'm also farming from Zimbabwe. Thank you so much, guys, for the introduction. I'm going to get straight into the program for today. So we all know that owning or managing your own farm needs you to basically occupy two, two positions, right? You need to be a farmer, which is obviously the physical groundwork, but you also need to be a manager, which is the entrepreneurial side, because you need to plan, you need to make decisions, and you need to implement these decisions. So I want to know... Who can, or rather, what are the traits that one needs to have to be a farm manager? Um, Pumez, I'll ask you this question. Pumez, hello. Oh, hello, hello, hello. I forgot. I forgot to turn on the mic. <laughs> Jesus, technology. <laughs> uh, so I'm saying so some uh, greetings again to the guys about to pop in into the, the the space. So the first uh, thing that I'd say you need to possess uh, as a farm manager, you need to be a person that has an unlimited appetite to learn. That's the first thing. Um, you need to learn because I would say that you need to be a good decision maker, but that comes from knowing things you need to be able to learn because now 
if you're not uh, able to learn your decision making it affects it like drastically so first trait that you need to do is to be umdu that is able to learn and you need to be able to learn from everyone and willing to learn from everyone you need to be curious you need to uh be a person that is uh open to innovation you need to know what's out there you need to know what's current you need to know um what can i use to to substitute lendo e current with lendo and deny you understand so you need to be a very curious person and a person that has an ability to learn and implement and try new things that's what i would say just in a nutshell thank you so much mpumazo for that um monya same question to you but i just also want you to elaborate more on what are the qualifications one might need to be a farm manager or to really understand the science of agriculture okay uh, what i would like to say is first of all if not most of all is to have a lot of patience whenever you are you are dealing with uh, the farm because you know with the farm is as much as you can have this uh, uh educational side and well equipped with information if you are not patient sometimes you won't be able to achieve some of the task that the farm will give you so what is much more basic is about being able to plan and and implement decisions so if you are if a, a good manager you need to be able to 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 learn how your your staff understands the information that you disseminate to them you also need to have a lot of patience in them because not everyone understands uh, the way that you disseminate information to them so you need to be patient to be able to to give them the, the direction and the lead so when it comes to to planning planning is the most critical and fundamental tool for you to be able to to be on a farm so it starts with something called uh partial budgeting before you go for the enterprise budgeting so the partial budgeting is you determine uh the crop or the animal or anything that you want to do in the farm you first plan financially so that you have a backbone a financial muscle to be able to to take through the production process so when you plan about the production uh you need to understand uh the challenges that you meet most of all uh the challenges are the one which prevent you to 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 get the the yield that you are looking at so whenever you are deciding to do a certain crop or a certain animal you need to be to be aware of the challenges that you meet be it uh pests the meat be it uh the weather you know in the uh, natural hazards most of the things that will prevent you from reaching your goal so it's it's about understanding what is required for you to be able to 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 start the production process then also uh, i would like to to look at the um, at the at the planning at the, at the, the planning role Yes, that, uh, apart um, from Monia, sorry to just cut you uh-huh. there. Um, I actually want us to go step by step with these things. You are answering all my questions already. Um, but thank you so much for that, uh, Monia. Also, okay. could you just kindly maybe just check your network a, a bit? Sometimes you you break. Um, okay. Okay. So. Okay, it's me, fine. All right. Um, let me move on to uh, Upigo. Um oh Monia was actually um answering all my questions already but I really want us to go through the step by step so that we can have a better understanding of this topic. Um but I like what Monia was speaking about when he um mentioned research that as farmers sometimes we're so quick to 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 want to farm without actually knowing what to do where we're going to go. So Pigo I want to get to you and ask you what are the potential problems uh one can encounter? on the farm and how can we prepare for them yes i've done my research now i'm on the fields what is your experience um okay um when it comes to um issues or problems we face at the farm you know there's um uh on a daily basis we also have um thing um issues and problems because the um uh, issues and never thing you never plan for like unforeseen issues um such as on thingy weather issues you never prefer, prepare for storms um there's a day you can go to the farm um you wake up that morning turn on the pump the pump's not working um try starting the tractor the tractor won't start um or the truck just has to go um deliver but then the um, um maybe um 
what I wanna go to, which point I wanna go to is that um there are issues which you can try and thingy and uh sorry. <laughs> sorry guys, this is my first time actually um being live with people. So like yeah. <laughs> No, it's yeah. okay. This is a safe space, Tigo. Yeah, so, You're doing great. Like, yeah, so like, yeah, for me, it's a, it's a different issue for me. Like, um, being a nice guy in the farm, like, and having, um, working with with older guys than me. So sometimes I face issues with people who come with their social um thing, social issues from home, and bring them to work, and then there are issues that are way too beyond me that I can't even solve my problem. Ah, sorry. I'm live. Sorry. Um, sorry, guys. I got this step there. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, can you think, um, Google, can you please, um, think, repeat your question again? Oh, okay. No problem. Uh, but you're explaining to us such an interesting aspect that you know you're a young farmer and you're working with all these old people. So how do you how do you manage them? You know, because you now manage this big operation. How do you how do you how do you work with that? Please share a bit more. Okay. Um, the operation is not that very big, but then now, um, <clears throat> the way I've made it look, it looks so big and so cool with the pictures and also not. But then like, yeah, it's, it's being normal. Like I treat them like my own parents. Like I never um, try and be, be, be bossy, but then sometimes I get brave enough to sit down with them and tell them if I don't like something, then I, I'd call my foreman like, um, listen, um, one, two, three, I didn't like, can you please talk to whom and whom and whom? And then sometimes it come back to me and say, Ish, so now I can't address this issue. And then sometimes you have to man up, I guess, and then speak to them. <laughs> yeah. Sure, yeah, no, that's that's pretty interesting. I like what uh, Pigo was saying because a lot of young farmers have to deal with that, especially when we are working with um, workers. Most of the time they are, they might be older than us. So, Munya, in your experience, how, how do you manage your labor force? You know, because sometimes as a young farmer, there's, um, I wouldn't say disrespect, but there's undermining that comes in. So what have you learned in terms of leadership and managing a business? Uh, you know, first project, we, we really had a challenge with dealing with uh, labor. You know, they, they look at you and you're young and they're older older than you, so they expect you to be to be to be to be listening to them rather than you giving them the instruction of what needs to be done. So in most cases what we then learned about uh these guys, the labor force, is you need to 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 to, to go back and leave the, the, the supervisor to deal directly with the labor force. So you need to have someone in between who, who can understand the language of, of the labor force and who, who can who can uh, give instructions and can be can be followed. So what you then need to do is to to give room for, 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 for the labor and the supervisors to deal with each other. Then you can be in control of the supervisor. So whichever uh, idea that you want to portray, you portray it through the supervisor and the supervisor will then do a top-down approach. So you, you need to be to be very, very, very uh, aware of how, how these people behave. So they behave in a in a way that they expect you to be following them rather than you giving them the the the, the instructions before because you are you are younger than everyone who's involved in the production process. So what we then learned over time is to 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 lead from behind. You know, you, you don't have to be in front all the time. So sometimes you 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 take uh the sitting role whereby you allow your management to 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 take the lead. So what you then do is you supervise your supervisor, so that each and every task that you you give them is is done in the way that you intend it to be done. So you know communication is also critical in in this uh, production process. You don't need to be to be harsh. So sometimes they they can be very very rude, and they can give you all sorts of emotions. Sometimes you can blow because they 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 just want money from you and you expect your work to be done. So they don't do according to what you want, but they do with their own pace. So what you then need to be to what you what do you then what we then need to do is to to take uh, a, a leading role from behind. You don't have to be in front all the time. 
So you need to see what they are doing so that you come with corrections. You yeah. tell them, this is the correct direction to go. You don't yeah. have to be in front all the time. So when you go in front, uh, arguments will, will start will happening, arise, you know. Yes. So, so, yeah. Yeah. so when you start doing these, so um, when you start doing these arguments now, it will delay the production process. I was actually just going to speak on that, Munya. Thank you so much for touching on that. That as a young farmer, it's it's very difficult to assert leadership when it comes to dealing with people who are older than you. Just purely based on the fact that we are Africans and we have we are cultured, you know. But I liked what uh, Munya was saying that sometimes you can also lead from behind. You know, there's no need to start uh, turf wars and you know all sorts of hierarchy arguments that are not going to progress your your operation forward so thank you for for that munya now let's get to the technical side i want to ask you Bumezo, um you know let's explain how you keep track of of your records because as we all know farm records are very important especially for the financial evaluation of your farm you will need them along with your ck if you want to expand your business when you go to the bank and uh, Farm record keeping includes your inventory, your record of the money you spend, you know, money that needs to be paid or that has been paid, receipts, expenses, labor records, etc. So, what is your method that you use for record keeping, um, Gomez? Hey, yeah, I struggle to turn on the mask, the, the, the mic here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'm tina record keeping here to ne- is mainly guided by the planning, you understand? Uh, because now we've been fine for quite some time. Uh, for instance, we what we do is that for the for the for the easiest way to produce is that we do hectares. So now we've came with a metric to know that okay, a hectare, each hectare in order to produce the hectare, you need uh so many bags of fertilizer. Uh, you need uh so many uh, bags of 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 whatever foliar feed or you need so many bags of everything so what we do is that we plan ahead with, with for our uh, record keeping and we plan for each hectare now what we do is that if you know that we've planted block a now we take everything that is going to be used in production for block a then we put it aside because you know that we've put uh, 30 bags of fertilizer we put uh one liter of this chemical then we you know like we're going to use uh, this much labor we're gonna use. Um, uh, you understand? So what we do is that with uh, with all those planning, uh, without all that planning in, in in place, when we have to actually go into production, that's what we implement. It makes it very uh, easy to to do record keeping. Now we know that okay, we have to use thirty bags of fertilizer. Now we go use that thirty bags of fertilizer. Set that off. Okay, you know that you need thirty people to weed uh this this much land. Now you take those people. Once you need more, that's when you need. To, okay, no. Um, usually I use this much labor. You understand? I'm not supposed to go uh, beyond this point. If you have to go this beyond this point, it has to be justifiable. Why did you use that one bags? Why did you take uh bag that one bags that were allocated for this field to that other field? You understand? So each planning for us it goes per hectare. We take everything that is going to be used per that, per that hectare. We put it there and we make sure that uh, uh, we go accordingly. So that makes uh, the record keeping very easily because you know now that okay, we have 30 bags of fertilizer put aside. We have this much chemical put aside for this hectare for the whole entire uh, production season. Now for the whole production season, you basically know what and how much you use of each, uh, each thing. You don't have a big storm where you're going to go, okay, no, we have to take uh, a fertilizer now. Then you go minus or whatever. No, for each hectare that we plant, we plan for we plan for it um, uh, ahead. We take everything that is going to be used in production of that particular hectare. We put it aside. It makes record keeping very easy. Like it makes it like there's nothing easier than record keeping if 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 you do it that way. Thank you so much, Mpumaza, for the tips, guys. I hope you heard him that um, he goes per hectare when he deals with his operation. And now let's actually speak about the operation. Let's delve into cabbage production immediately. We're speaking about fertilizers. We're speaking about all these things. Uh, Pigo, I'm going to come to you now, right? So as small-scale farmers, some of us don't even bother with, you know, soil testing. We just hoi nitrogen, nitrogen, nitrogen. So please explain um, the process of growing cabbages and take us through your production i'm gonna ask you to please explain the land preparation that you need to make sure is correct for cabbage production 
Oh, okay. Interesting part now. <laughs> um, so um, we just touched on things like um, soil lumping and testing. You guys just hold nitrogen. Um, it doesn't start there. So there's a reason why we do things like soil testing to check things like pH, to check um, for NPK, that's nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So um, when, whenever you're thinking your results, your soil results, they come back, they tell you like the amount that is needed for nitrogen, um, the amount is needed for potassium and thingy and phosphorus. And then from there, you correct because one thing, the main goal is to ensure that you have a good soil pH, not too alkaline or too acidity. And then when it comes to land preparation, um, I remember the first time while we were using the farm because the farm we were planting on, we were actually leasing the farm. I remember um, it was in work for like um, a good six years. So you had to start uh, with um, primary tillage. From pr- what I mean by primary tillage, when, the, you, when you're working, sort of, that hasn't been worked for a long time. So we started things like um, thinking, um, um, you have to dip, uh, you have to think, oh, what's this thing now? Uh, um, sorry, guys. Oh, before you even go to your disc or your blouse, um, you thingy, Pumia, so please, can you help me here, man? <laughs> um, what's this now? Um, <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> no, my guy. Uh, for us, with primary tillage, what you try yeah. to do is that you need to break the soil deep structure breathe, first yes. with deep ripper. ripping. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah deep ripping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah. So you deep rip. Um, you make sure that you have you have done that. You go to certain millimeters, and from there you can now come with your disc. Um, with your disc, you can come with your uh, thingy, uh, your roller. So with us. You have seen. Um, I have ridges when um when we plant because in Wienland we have a uh a, a, a system that has been designed for thingy for water. So we don't we don't usually irrigate from water that comes from the dams or where or wherever. So we have a kind of system. We have water flowing the whole time of Wienland. I'm um, 24 hours, 365 days, and then so we, we usually um plant in ridges. So whenever it happens that they they maintaining them um, or work maintenance has been done for the main current and the water is closed, you know that you can think um you can flat irrigate. Yeah. And then um what else? Um can you ask me more please? <laughs> If you don't mind, um, Kuku. Okay, of course, I'm going to, that's why you guys are here. So, um, please explain spacing. What about the spacing? Um, or are you done with um, soil preparation? You've told us everything that we need to do in terms of the soil preparation, or is there anything else that we, we need to remember? Um, you do it until you see it, it's fine. <laughs> you can even test okay, it two, okay. two or three times, yeah. Until we see a flat surface. Yeah, flat. It has to be flat. And then it's up to the person whether they're going to do it in ridges or they're going to plan flat out. Okay, thank you so much, Pigo. Okay, now Pigo has covered soil preparation, guys. So, Munya, I'm going to come to you now. Let's speak uh, uh, spacing. Let's speak uh, the timing of applying your nitrogen or, or your land. Uh, what manure you use. You know, please guide us through that. And also, um, you know, with most s- small-scale farmers, the reality is that they plant by hand, you know. So when is the best time to also plant cabbages, Munya? Okay, uh, let me start with the, with the fertilizer aspect. Uh, so usually, uh, okay, oh, you said spacing. So let me start with spacing. So spacing is, is determined by the head size that you are looking at. So most farmers, they want uh, something between medium and large heads. So if you're going for large heads, it means you need to have a bigger spacing than someone who's expecting medium heads. So medium heads, you'll be expecting a spacing between 50 by 50. That's uh, 50 centimeters by 50 centimeters from cabbage to cabbage. Then you can go for 50 by 60 to 50 by 65. 50 in row, 50, 60 between row. So that you can... Um, you have a, a lower plant population and higher uh, and, and bigger sized cabbages. So if you're looking at uh, bigger sized cabbages, you also look into the variety in question. So sometimes other varieties, they grow big. So automatically they call for a bigger spacing. So you need to also understand uh, the, the, the variety that you'll be working with. So if you get a medium sized cabbage, uh, it means you need uh, a, a lower uh, spacing of about 50 by 50. Then going to, to fertilizer application, 
usually we recommend farmers to to do what is called split application. So split application is when you do a uh, different application at different stages, starting from the, the first week. So after transplanting, maybe seven to eight days from transplanting date, you can come in with your ammonium nitrate. Then you do your first application of ammonium nitrate of about uh, five grams of, 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 of ammonium nitrate per, per plant. So if you're a small scale farmer, you look for something called fertilizer cups, those small ones that you can use to, 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 to apply. So you apply uh, five grams for every plant at uh, day seven or day eight. That's the first week. Then the second application will come on day 14 or, or day 21. Now it depends with the um, days to maturity for your cabbage. So if, if your cabbage is early days to maturity, it means you need to come in earlier with your fertilizers. So it, if it's an early variety, you need to come up with uh, 7, 14, 21. That's the application for AN. Then if you have something uh, like calcium nitrate or maybe potassium nitrate, you then need to come with Munia, those ones. Um, Munia, we are missing yes. out on essential information that you're giving us. Your network is, is cutting. It's, it's breaking. Ah. Uh, is there not something you can do? Uh, let me try and then reboot. Yeah, Google. Okay, you can do that. Isn't that isn't your network okay. Rosa? Yes, I can hear the guy perfectly. Is it me? Yeah, you think Rosa, so? Is it me, guys? Yeah, I've heard every, everything you, that the guy has said. <laughs> oh, ah, so Munya. Google, so Google, ah. you're the one with the problem. <laughs> ah, I'm so sorry, Munya. Please continue. Sorry, guys. It's my network. Sorry, everyone. Okay, okay. So I was saying... Uh, when you do split applications now, you need to understand the varieties. So there's, there's varieties like uh, the ones from Sakata and uh, Stark A's. So Stark A's is uh, medium, medium maturing varieties. Uh, you talk of Kilimo and, and, and Sapphire. And there's something called 3301 or 3311. Those are medium maturity to late. So they need uh, uh, late... Uh, late applications in, in terms of uh, top dressing. So you, you put your top dressing on, on, on day 14 for the late maturing, depending with the, with the season. So if it's winter and it's cold, it means you need to, to come in late with uh, ammonium nitrate, or rather you come early with calcium nitrate, which is uh, an, 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 an early in, 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 in assimilation. You know, when, when you put calcium nitrate, it absorbs faster than ammonium nitrate when it's winter. So you need to also understand uh, the different timelines. Then, uh, depending on seasonality, sometimes uh, it might be raining. When it's the rain season, there's a lot of leaching that comes about. So we recommend if you are to do your top dressing, you can also use the drain system, whereby you, you use your, 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 your knapsacks and... Uh, your your center pivots to 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 do the the fertilizer application so that you do it in a soluble form rather than putting it in a granular form. Thank you so much, Munia, for the abundance of knowledge. Uh, farmers, I hope you guys had your pen and paper out. Munia just dropped some bars. So, um, Bumez, I'm gonna come to you. Um, tell us about cabbage. You know, what is the best cultivar to use? Is it a which season crop is it? And then maybe you can also touch on your pest control. Yeah, so, so um, uh, thank you for the platform. Uh, guys, uh, uh, cultivars depend um, uh, per season. You know that there are cultivars that, uh, are, are, that will thrive at a certain season. But for us, generally, we just use um, Optima. Optima for us works out like every time like year round we're using uh, optima uh and these are the cultivar called uh grand slam so the, those are the cultivars that we're using in summer we have we use uh optima then in, uh, in winter we use grand slam and cal and optima yeah so those are the best settings uh that we've found uh to work for us so i don't know for other seasons we use we, we other cultivars we use something called this other time 
we used to something called uh, was it was it called drumhead or something like that. It did not work for us. So you also need to find uh, what works for your farm and also what works for 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 your customers because the the the, uh, the drumhead uh, was those cabbages that grow big. Then it's spongy inside. And it was not favorable for our customers. So our customers uh, were preferring this other, this other coffee, opt- Optima and Grand Slam. So yeah, uh, you use uh, your, your market also to determine what cultivar works best for them. You understand? So if you are starting up, it's best to use like most cultivars. But if you like you you you're in a certain area, use what works uh, for 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 whatever market that you're preserving. Uh, number two, touching on e- e- pest control. E- pest control. Uh, I call it, I usually call it pro, uh, crop protection. Uh, crop protection. Uh, crop protection uh, touches on the overall health of the plant. You understand? So, a crop protection touches um, on the pest management, the disease management, and and the overall plant uh, plant growth. So, T now what the programs that we're using currently now, or or or, or the spray mix that we're using. Uh, the basic thing is you have to know that each time you are spraying for your plant, but this doesn't work for everyone. But what works for us is that um, the the cocktail that we've, we've been able to develop is that each time uh, you you are you are spraying your crops uh, at fifteen days intervals, you must make sure that your spray mix has a buff. Uh, a buff is something that is called um, uh, a buff. Is it's, it's basically it's a pH regulator because you find that water from your region has a certain pH. Um, that will prevent some other chemicals from working. So what the buff does is that it brings uh, the, the the water to an optimum con- uh, uh, an optimum conditions for all chemicals to be able to be active. So what we, we have to make sure that you do on your spray mix, it, there must be buff, which is a pH regulator. Make sure that um, your spray mix has a pesticide. Now you have to go and scout. Scouting is very important before you spray so that you can know, okay, uh, do I have pests? So will I need a systematic pesticide so that when whatever pest comes, it eats the cabbage, then it dies? Or do I need an actual contact pesticide? Are there pests on my field? Pests on my field? A contact pe- a pesticide will help you um, uh, to kill pesticides that you are seeing, which are contact inter- insecticide. So what we do is that you put a buff, you put a, a, um, an either a, a contact pesticide or um, a systematic pesticide. Also, you need to go scout in the field to check what diseases that you might be having or what diseases do you have in the field so you can know whether do you put a systematic fungicide or, or do you put um, a contact fungicide. And also what we'll do is that to boost the overall plant growth and to protect the plant, there's something called foliar feed. A foliar feed, basically, it's a foliar applied fertilizer above um, uh, uh, NPK. Isn't that you just apply NPK? Sometimes it's just pure NPK or you just apply urea. What foliar feed or foliar applied fertilizers do is that foliar f- applied fertilizers contain some of the also some of the micro in, uh, in nutrients that the plant needs so things like boron and molybdenum and such and also some plant regulators such as cytokinins so you need a, a fully applied fertilizer uh, in your spray mix then you need something called a wetter or a sticker a wetter or a sticker is something that will help chemical uh, the, the plants absorb the chemicals that you just mixed and you're spraying on them so that's how you you take care of your crop production crop production you have to make sure that each spray contains all of those elements in order for it to be good and to be targeting because now it doesn't work out well financially if you're gonna look a pest you go spray um so, so, so you look for a pest wednesday you see a pest you go spray uh, then you see a disease Friday, you go spray. You see a deficiency of a, a certain micro and Sunday, you go spray. It's not economical. You rather just put all those things at one spray and then you spray it uh, at 15 days interval. So that's as far as we can go to um, uh, crop protection. And also there are things such as uh, you need to wait for cabbages, you understand? So there are, there are chemicals that you can spray, herbicides that you can spray, um, uh, I think Pico is out of the live. I don't know, maybe it's the network. Um, you need uh, to protect your crops against pests, uh, against weeds and everything. But that's another, that's another, that's another thing, another thing entirely. Uh, Pico will, uh, 
we'll, we'll unpack that one, the happy side uh, component. But that's as far as I can go with, uh, with, with crop protection. I don't know if you have another question. All right. No, thank you so much. You've yeah, really before... unpacked it for us. Um, Munya, do you want to add something? Yes, I, I wanted to, to add something about scouting. So there's yeah, something called scouting guys, whenever you're you doing your My connection is so Hi, right Pigo. Yes, we can ah. hear you. Okay, so whenever you're doing your, your, your spraying, you need to be well aware of the things that you're dealing with. So you need to do scouting. So maybe once or twice a day, you move around your field, you look what's happening, uh, the progress, uh, is there any leaf eaters? Uh, is there any reaction Guys, in terms of um, leg growth? Sorry, I don't Which know whether it's my producing. network or it's, it's, it's Munya's network, but uh, I, I can't hear him properly now. I'm both. I'm, uh, Munya, you see, it wasn't I'm just me. I'm also struggling, guys. Yeah, I'm here. But I can hear Munya. <laughs> yes, it's, Are you it's mine. Okay, Munya, Munya, we can continue. I'm gonna restart the network. Okay, it's fine. So I, I was saying you, you do the scouting maybe once or twice a day and you see your, 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 your progress. So if there's something like uh, leaf eaters, uh, sap sucking insects, you, you then need to, to come up with, with a good spray program. So before you, you, you continue with your spray program, you need to be well aware of what's happening in your food so that you come with the right uh, remedy for everything that's happening there. So in general, you need to have a, a balanced fertilizer, pro, a, a balanced spray program in terms of your, your, your sprays, uh, your fungicides, uh, your, your insecticides, so that you won't lose your crop. Uh, usually when your crop is, is, is developing, when head, head formation starts, that's where the problem starts. When you have those tiny leaf eaters, they will damage uh, the, the heart or the the middle part of your, your crop. So once it's damaged, it's difficult for the cabbage to give you the, the heads now. So it's very critical to also do what is called scouting. Thank you so much, Munya, for that. Um, I think you also uh, touched on what um, Bumeza was saying, that you go and look at your fields but just because something an effort has bit your 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 leaves doesn't mean that you need to go spray so scouting is very essential and you need to have a pattern in which you you scout your fields you know every week or so so once you you are able to understand the pests and the diseases that are um in your field that is when you can get a great um fertilizer or pesticide or insecticide program um pico are you here Pigo, hello. Is it network, guys? Yeah, Pico is in, but I think he's requesting to be a speaker or something. Okay, Pigo, can you hear us? Yo, okay, I think he's having some network problems. Um, Munya, I want us to continue with um, pests and diseases because a lot of times, you know, farmers plant and everything goes well, but as soon as they face challenges, it always has to deal with pests. So I really want us to, to solve this in terms of what it is, what is the most general spraying program that there is, just rule of thumb. Okay, uh, as, a, as a rule of thumb, uh, what I would recommend is to have uh, something uh, religious in terms of sprays. You need to, 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 to do a planning. So what we do when we are doing our, our spray programs, usually every Monday, uh, we make it uh, a religious practice that every Monday morning, we come up with, uh, with the sprays. So if we are, if, if we are doing uh, pesticides and, uh, and, uh, and, and the and fungicides. We know every Monday we are coming with a different formula. So usually we, we, we prefer the, the Sigenta chemical range and the Bayer. Uh, those branded chemicals, they are better off. So if you're using something like uh, Lambda for, for, your insect side, for, for insect sites and you, you get something from Bayer uh, called Belt, you, you need to, to mix those and, and, and change them uh, each and every week. So at a seven day interval, I, I I prefer to do it at a seven day interval, uh, especially when it's summer and it's hot. Because when it's summer and it's hot, you get to 
to, to get most challenges from different uh, pests because the rate of breeding of pests is higher when it's uh, it's warmer. So in the in the warmer season, uh, usually in summer and the rain season, it's it's very very critical to to come up with uh, religious sprays of a seven day interval. You space your spray your sprayings with seven days. So you you come in uh, on a Monday, then next Monday you need to come up with uh, a different formula. So you can you can mix your 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 fungicides. I think fungicides have a, have a biggest range. You talk of your copper oxychloride. You talk of your folio gold. Uh, talk of um, redomel gold. So some of these they are curative fungicides. Some of these they are preventive. So you need to also understand uh, curative and uh, preventive. So when you're starting with your sprays, it's very important to start with uh, preventives. So you start with your preventive uh, fungicides like uh, copper oxychloride. Then when you come back, you come with something called uh, chemalaxy or metamil, which is more of a curative uh, fungicide. So you interchange at a seven-day interval. Then you can also come with ridomil. You can also come with uh, folio gold. It, it all depends uh, with your budget and your preference. Yeah. So yeah. some will prefer bare, some will prefer uh, syngenta. But I'm, I'm a syngenta and bare person. So I usually okay. mix the two. All right. Thank you so much, Munya. Farmers, I really hope you got the, the tips and tricks when it comes to pests um, on cabbage production because really Munya gave us everything, hey? Um, Pivo yeah. and um, Pumezo, are you here? Yeah, in the corner, but I'm not even sure if they have a Guys. Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> um, I, I okay, don't know Pigo, if you, can you also are here. Hear me, but then I'm struggling to hear you guys. Like in jail. You guys are checking. <laughs> Can like, you hear me now, people? Like, yes, I, I struggle, you, guys. All of you are on auto tune. Okay. Like, it's auto tune. I can pay. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I can hear okay, you people, I have a question. I have a question for you now that you're here. Yes. I can hear you. Please. Okay, so here's your question, uh, Pigo. You know, what has been the secret to your, your best cabbage yield? And who are your markets? And how do we find the best cabbage markets? Okay, I, I, I had markets, but then I didn't hear the whole question because of the network. But then I had something about markets. Can you please repeat? Okay, I asked, all right, I asked you what has been your, okay, rather, what has been the secret to your best cabbage yield? And who did you supply these cabbages to? Who are your markets, Pigo, when it comes to cabbages? Okay, um... I'm not. I'm. I'm not sure if I hit the question very well because of the network. But then I think ask me something about yield, um, and who I've supplied. Okay. Um. The first time. Um. My first cabbage season, I had a good yield and it was so amazing. Um. I planted something like thirty thousand. I was able to harvest something like twenty three thousand, and because lack of market by then, um, we had to send our cabbages to the market. And to your 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 municipal markets. So la like, uh, PMP you have your fresh um your fresh produce in Kondeni. But then now the downside about market um is that um you'll never negotiate a price for a market. Um a market you can deliver a thousand cabbages today and tomorrow morning they just tell you it's they're only able to sell like four hundred cabbages. And like now, when it comes to markets, um my boss was able to think it to secure markets with um, retail shops. So now we're even able to um, we're even able to um, negotiate a price and stick to that price. And the only thing that affects the price is inflation because now we're facing, um, a, the, the market is flooded with cabbages at the moment. So we're selling around about um, eight rand a head. Um, yeah. Should I add more? Thank that? you so much. Um, thank you so much, Pigo. Um, I think you you covered the market parts, which is something that was very important for us to understand. Um, you know, where do we sell our cabbages to? Mm. Um, the the previous question that I had asked you is the you said that when you first started with cabbages, you you had such an amazing yield. Yep. What was the secret to that? What did you do right? Um, sticking to a basic management. Um. From planting to harvest, okay. Um, Pumezo covered the 
the pesticide and insecticide side as well as ammonia. And I'm not sure if you guys go to the um, herbicide part because that's another disadvantage or a con when it comes to um, your thingy or cabbage production. So um, can I just cover a bit on the herbicide? Uh, herbicide yes, please. Side. Yes. So yes, please. Um, I'm usually on, when it comes to, ve- to vegetables, we usually weed. Um, unlike your grain crops, we um they're already like um um heavy heavy side ready like maybe your mace it so with veggies you make sure that um the you you use your pre emergence you have um chemicals called garlic and which you have to spray like ten days before planting because now you will never be able to apply heavy side when you already have your seedlings in the fields because now you have your the heavy sides called um the most popular one to run. Guys, up, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. You 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 have chemicals called you round up contact heavy sides. Imagine spraying that on your cabbages. That's like killing your whole cabbages, like your 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 whole field. So when it comes to um thingy, you make sure that you um you spray your pre emergence. By then you know that you already killed or you have minus one cycle of weeding. Because sometimes it might happen that you have to weed like four times in a season. But then if you use the correct pre-emergence, um, pre-emergence chemicals, you know that maybe you've killed like two cycles. Because um, weeding is another strain when it comes to us farmers. Like when you have to pay for that labor, you know that a day they in the they they they, they spend like they can spend like um twenty days weeding and that's money. Like a day they cost like hundred and fifty rand being there. So like you have to make sure with um your pre-emergence that's uh that's one step you have to make sure about <laughs> thank you so much um pigo and i actually share that sentiment myself as a farmer weeds the farming the farm that i am leasing is just filled with weeds and weeds and weeds and weeds so it's very important to to get your herbicide on check before you start planting um farmers so i have Two more questions before I open up the floor to the listeners to ask you guys direct questions. And I think I will ask um, Pumezo, are you here? Yes, I can hear you, but I'm struggling. Can you hear me properly? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, let's, let's, let's hear the question, then I'll wing it. Okay, thank you. Um, you know, last question. When it comes to markets, you know... Um, a common mistake I feel that farmers make is that we, we plant and we have not secured our markets. Most of us do rely on the city markets, but I think we can be smarter than that. What do you think um, is an opportunity when it comes to um, supplying vegetables, cabbage to be specific? Should we go to the informal markets or should we stick to trying to secure contracts? Yes, so um, hey, Tina, we mainly uh, send, uh, we, we don't send cabbage, we barely send cabbages to the market. Uh, there's a market in Clarewood, we barely send cabbages there. For us, what has worked out good? Can you still hear me? Loud and clear. Yeah, what has worked out perfectly for us is selling on farm. And I will not lie when it comes to um saying... <laughs> How do you look for informal markets? You, you, those guys sort of just find you. And, and them finding you has to do with the service that you'll give to one of them. Because you have to know that in our area, uh, here in case in the Peter Marisbeck area, uh, uh, there's a plenty of, 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 of informal market. Né? I'm not sure if you can still hear me. We can still hear you. Yeah, um, yeah there's plenty of informal market this side. Now, how you market yourself and sell the cabbages is to when that one guy comes for for fifty cabbages, you give them great service. That's how that's how we've grown our cabbage market, uh, cabbage market, cabbage market. You give them great service. That guy tells the next guy. That guy tells the next guy. The next guy. Uh, you find that maybe pests and you will uh, maybe we'll plant like uh, plus minus two hundred cabbage, two hundred thousand cabbages. 80% of that is, is is sold on the informal market. It's just guys coming into the farm, pouring in. But the greatest uh, marketing strategy that we use is, is to provide them with great quality. Because if you give great quality product, 
a guy will give a word of mouth to the next guy. No, I got these cabbages at this particular farm. Now people will start pouring uh, into the farm. And the nice thing there is that when you're selling to the informal market, you control the prices, which improves uh, your profit margins. Unlike taking to those uh, fresh produce markets or trying to secure a product where they'll tell you that, uh, no, we'll take 1,000 cabbages at, uh, at eight rands, you understand? Now they're, they're, they're sort of screwing you on the price. Also, you'll take to the Clarewood market where you'll take 1,000 cabbages. Then they will tell you that, no, um, we're able uh, to sell 800 from those cabbages. Also, they still have to take commission. In the informal market, in the farm, a person will come, you sell the cabbages at, at 10 rands. They see the value of the cabbage. They see that this is a great quality cabbage. Now, they take the cabbage without complaints. So, um, I would, I do not know, I always say this, uh, I always say this to people, try to, 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 to sell to the informal market first. Just try as much as you can because the informal market, as much as uh, it's not consistent, but if you are able to nail it the right way, then you make the most money there uh, rather than trying to secure a contract where those guys will try to negotiate and try to buy something at like 30% less price than you would have sold it at informal market. So for us, when it comes to things like cabbages and spinach, um, informal market works best for uh, work out best for us. But some of the things for high value crops such as uh, green peppers, butternuts and everything, then you can try to secure a contract. But it's very hard to find a contract uh, in this region. I don't know if people have gotten a contract, but we have never gotten a contract. For us, it's just a matter of giving them a great product and then they keep on returning to us. We have never, like we've been farming for like, um, they've, the farm was there like three years before I came in. We've been farming, I've been farming there for three years and they've been farming for three, that's six years, we've never gotten um, a, a contract. So it's based on you giving them a great quality product. If you give them a great quality product, they sort of just keep on coming back and back and back and back and back. So that's that's as much as I, 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 I can say. Produce a great quality product, number one. Number two, try to explore the informal markets as much as you can because your your, your profit margins are better in the informal market. Uh, yeah, that, that's, that's as much as I can say from, from, from my side. No, you've really said a lot, Mpumezo, and I agree with you, hey. Um, a lot of farmers take this lightly, but your informal, the, the, for me personally, there's nothing informal about the informal market. Yeah. <laughs> that system, <laughs> you know, there's really nothing informal. It, that's a very consistent system. You just need to do it the right way. Your job as a farmer is to ensure that you have good quality so mm -hmm. that when you sell, you sell well. Yeah. So, um, Munya, I have a, I know you're an agronomist and I really have a technical question for you. This is the second last question I'm going to ask before I open up the floor. Munya, please, t um, mm -hmm. I don't think we, we spoke on irrigation when it comes to cabbages. And then please tell us at what stage we need to apply the first land dressing, if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, what I believe about, about cabbages, about uh, maintaining uh, food holding capacity. Your, your moisture has to be has to be balanced. You, you don't have to over over irrigate or under irrigate. You need to maybe irrigate uh, four to five times maybe a week for you to to, to maintain the moisture, and it will help you uh, in terms of assimilation of your nutrients. You know the cabbages uh, they 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 enjoy uh, nitrates. So when you put your nitrates, you also need to to put water so that it can go into the system of the cabbage and it can go to, to its maximum capacity. So there, there, there was something called Optima that the, the, the other speaker said. I don't know if it's some problems uh, about Optima. Optima is, is a very good uh, uh, round cabbage, which, which performs very well when it's, it's well irrigated. You can get uh, very big sizes of about uh, six to seven when you do proper irrigation. So when you do your, your fertilizer applications, you also then need to, to come in with uh, minimum uh, irrigation amounts so that your, your plant will be able to, to take all the nutrients from, from the fertilizers that you have uh, put. So in most cases, just maintain uh, a, a certain moisture level, which is not too much or too low, so that you, you have a very good crop. Thank you so much, Munya. I actually jotted that down. And I liked how you gave us a very technical 
explanation that, um, you know, water goes well with nitrates. Um, Pigo, I'm going to ask you one last question and then I'm going to open up the floor, guys. So um, uh, everyone who's just joined us, welcome. I'm going to open up the floor. So if you have questions for our speakers, just request to be a speaker um, on your phone there and then I will accept and then you can ask our speakers direct questions that you would like to know on the topic. Maybe questions that I, I didn't cover or maybe questions that I overlooked. So Pigo, one last question. Um, you know, let's speak about just being a, a, a young farmer in this industry. You know, what is your opinion about starting your own farm? Like, what advice do you think you can give um, us young farmers when it comes to starting a farm? You know, what is it that we really need to make sure we have on lock in the beginning so that we can do things right? All right, Gooks, um, I hope you, you can hear me because I'm, I'm struggling. Yeah, we just can like, hear just you. like Kumpumas is struggling, I'm, I'm struggling. <laughs> Yo. We can hear you. I think you asked, like, um, what is it to be, what to be, as a young farmer, how is it to start your own farm, something like that? Yes, yeah. I asked, um, what is the most important thing that we need to know as young farmers? If we want to start our own farm, what is the most important a uh, trick or to, tip that you sorry, can give us to, to own your own farm to start your if you can farm. own it or lease it or whatever oh okay okay that's that's what well, this one's quite tricky because now um i'm not working alone i'm working under someone but then now whenever you want to start a farming operation you have to know your goal you have to have a vision and the goal for that so me i was um hired by someone or employed employed by someone who knew their goal and vision and mean i have to work towards that they want to produce vegetables i have to make sure that um i produce good quality vegetables and um i always get um dms people um i always tell people i don't own a farm i really don't own a farm but then one day i like to own a farm but then you have to be em- I don't, I don't, I'm not saying you have to be employed first, but then if you know that you have got land at home and you've got the potential to do it, um, you can go attend um, a few agricultural courses and make sure you gather knowledge. Like, don't come and DM Mpumezo and say, um, Mpumezo, please share your knowledge with me. Mpumezo went to thingy, to an agricultural institution for like four years. And when uh, you want to come and expect to Mpumezo, he's going to show it to you for like um, in 30 minutes time. And then now you're going to go farm. So, and the most important thing when it comes to that, you must know that do you have the passion, do you, do you have the passion to farm, do you love farming? Because um, farm is not something that you have to just wake up and decide that today I'm going to be a farmer. I, 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 have, I have my own reasons why I'm a farming. And the most critical thing, the reason why we farm, is to feed our people. Like, I see now it's becoming, um, <laughs> they say we're making farming fashionable, but then it's not about fashion. We, 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 we just make it seem cool to people, but then it's because we love our work, it's the way we portray love, love to our work, like any other people do with their professions. <laughs> yeah, and, and you guys are doing it well, hey? Just, mm. just putting it out there. Um, okay, guys, so you heard Upigo, and if you guys have any questions, now is your time. The floor is open. Munya is here. Um, Bumezo is, is saying that he has internet problems, but he's going to come back on. So if you have any questions, please request to be a speaker. Oh. Munya is here. Pigo is here. Okay. Um, ask them anything. It's, it's a free... Sp- free. Hello? Oh, um, Cooks, um, before we open the floor, um, yes, I want I had a request even for now, add on something that Umpumas was talking about when it comes to market. Please, please do, yeah. yes. Okay, guys, like, um, I've dealt with a lot of people coming to us and saying, like, um, we don't have markets, um, we've planted so much, and this is happening now. So, I like the approach Umpumas when it comes to informal markets, never underestimate those guys. But then, please, um, again, don't be afraid to approach your, the, your formal market because now when it comes to retails, retails are not all the same. Um, you have your shoppers and checkers, um, um, they fall under the Freshmark group, and they think it's quite, um, it's very, 
fancy, if I may say, um, they require your GAP certificate whatsoever. You have to buy in contract. But then now with me, um, I've been um, thingy, sending our approaches to various retail um, shops. I approach your your unso popular retail shops. Like go to your boxer. Um, yesterday I had a meeting with one lady from boxer. Boxer is a new project now where um, they're actually willing to take projects from um, not necessarily young farmers, but then black farmers who are emerging. Um, approach your spa managers um they're always willing to take produce you, you don't have to sign contracts there like yeah your oxford um fresh uh, oxford fresh um markets there's so many shops that they're willing to take um produce from us it's just that we do not approach them like um give yourself time knock on doors go to every retail shop it's not about um your checkers and shop but your pick and pay your spa your checkers or whatsoever uh, um, approach each and every retail shop that sells food and vegetables. Those guys are always willing to take purchase from us as farmers. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pigo. Um, yeah, guys, you got the plug from Farm Spaces here. First, please approach ShopRite. Please approach Boxes. Please approach um, Cambridge. Please approach those places. because as people mentioned that they they are opportunities and as a farmer don't be afraid to go knocking on those doors you know um i think um that is something that you guys need to understand that a, a farmer is a business first so you need to make sure that when you plant your produce is going to the right place for the right price so now i am officially opening up the floor guys the floor is open Please request to become a speaker. Ask our farmers direct questions. They will answer you. So you can request to become a speaker on your phone. Just there should be like a button there. And then you can ask your questions. You can become a speaker and then I will accept so that you can speak and ask our farmers anything you want. So I'm going to open up the space for five minutes. If there are no questions then there are no questions. But this is a very good opportunity, so I encourage you guys to have questions. There is no such question as a silly question. This is a safe space. You are more than welcome to ask any question related to the topic. Don't be shy, basically. So whilst we wait for um, the listeners to become speakers, I wanted to ask... Oh, now Pumezo is gone again. <laughs> Oh my gosh, okay. I wanted to ask Mpumeza a question, but I think I will take it to you, Munya. Um, tell us about your profession. You know, are we, are we on the right track? If I'm going to go to school to study to become an agronomist, what are the job opportunities? Yes, uh, the job opportunities are there, but uh, my recommendation is to do your own thing. You know, being an entrepreneur is all that matters now. It's not about working for, for these big corporates and companies. It's about being your own boss. You know, when you're, you're a farmer and you're doing your own thing, you have the, the knowledge and the expertise. You can, you, you can do everything at your own time. You, 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 you are not forced to, to do these things. You, you, you give yourself targets and you push, you know. So, yeah, going to, to, to agricultural colleges is, is, is pretty much okay. I encourage that. But uh, my best recommendation is to get knowledge that you can apply rather than uh, going to be someone's extension officer. If you can put what you have learned into practice, now that's education. So education is not about uh, having all those papers, the degrees, and all hang them on the wall, uh, feel appreciated. You know, I believe in, 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 in working, using that skill to produce something. Because the farmer is a producer. You need to, to, to be to be at, at the end of the production process rather than being the one who's giving the advice. So at times I used to, to give advice to, to all these farmers, but you know, you reach a certain point when you, when you actually understand that uh, you can do more other than uh, giving information. You go into the production process. That's what I believe in. Going into the production process is what matters the most. 
Then I, I, I wanted to put an input about uh, cabbage marketing. You know, it's very much profitable when you're selling from the farm rather than transporting to these markets. When, when the, the buyers are coming to get the produce from the farm, it's, it's easier and cheaper for you in terms of uh, uh, transport expenses. Then as well, you can maximize on your profit because everything that you're going to get is, is, is profit, uh, less on transport costs. Thank you so much, Munya. You are so right and correct. You, you've hit the nail on the head or, or the head on the nail on that one. Thank you so much. We have a question from Eugene. Eugene, how are you? Eugene, hello. Okay, maybe Eugene is having some network problems. We can move on to Zolile from now. Uh, Zolile. Hi. 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 Um, yeah, I've got two questions. Um, the first question is, okay, generally for all the speakers. Um, to what extent do you guys use crop rotation? Uh, do you... Do you you plant cabbage uh, twice twice on one area in, in, in the same season, or do you do you switch it up with other uh, uh, crops? And then the other question is, um, which type of irrigation systems would you guys recommend? Overhead drip. Yeah, um, that's my quick. Okay, okay. Uh, I think. Okay, uh, Munia, should... please um, answer. Please answer the crop rotation. And then, um, Bumezo, can you please answer the irrigation? Okay, on crop rotation, uh, I, I believe you need to plant once in, 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 in every, every three cropping, uh, cropping seasons. Like you, you, you plant now, then you skip uh, three planting seasons so that you don't do brassica back to back. So if you do cabbage or, or broccoli or maybe cauliflower, you don't need to plant it again on the same area. So what like Mpumezo was been saying, uh, you, you need to divide your, your field into blocks. So when you have different blocks, you need to, to rotate, maybe come in with uh, legumes so that they do nitrogen fixing. So when you do more of cabbage, 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 you build on, 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 on resistance and you have something called black root. Black root will, will affect your next crop if you don't do rotation. So it's important to, to do rotation so that you cut on the disease path and the disease cycle so that when you come with a different uh, cropping family, say you were doing brassicas, you switch to, to legumes or solanaceous crops, it means you'll be breaking the disease cycle of a certain uh, family. So it's very important to, to rotate. Thank you so much, Munia. I hope that answers you, Zolile. Um, Pumezo, please answer his uh, question in terms of what irrigation system do you, we use or recommend for cabbage production? Can you hear me properly? Hello. Hello, Pumezo. Hi, we can hear you. Hello. Okay, I'm not sure if I'm not sure if you guys can hear me now. Yes, we can hear you now. Okay, Tina, um, because... Yeah, okay. I think Mpumezo, Mpumezo, you're cutting, you're breaking. Um, okay, Mpumezo is having technical problems. Pigo um, is probably having technical problems as well. Munya is the only stable network. Munya, thank you, please. I thought we could diversify the question but please also answer him in terms of irrigation okay uh, i believe in in overhead if you can have sprinklers and uh anything that can give you a maximum amount of water maybe uh those furrows like you were saying i'm said something about uh about uh flood irrigation system so when you when you're using flood irrigation system now you need to do um uh, beds or maybe ridges, so that you don't have uh, leaching. So your, 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 your irrigation consideration will, will base on the land preparation that you do. If you decide to, to do uh, flood irrigation, then make sure your cabbages will be on top of ridges so that you don't experience leaching. 
So most of the times we, when you do uh, flatland planting, it's very difficult to, to do an irrigation type which does not give you maximum amount of water that is required by your cabbage to grow properly and reach a certain uh, yield size. So my basic recommendation is to come up with a sprinkler irrigation type that is overhead or maybe flooding if push comes to shove. Mm. Sorry. Thank you so much, Munya. Yeah. Sorry, uh, I just wanted to ask because uh, I have a problem with, uh, you know, these field rabbits uh, eating like uh, cabbage at night. I don't know if, if if there's like some thrush that you can put over it or if you guys have that problem for like uh, fault animals coming and eating your produce. Okay, uh, there's something called uh, owl stand. Most of the farmers uh, commercially, they put a stand in the field so that owls will come and land on top of those uh, those stands. So when you introduce that, uh, usually it, it, it's night. If, if rabbits come into play, uh, the owls will be there to, to protect you. So it's a, it's, a, it's a good measure that you can do to, to prevent rats, uh, rabbits, and most of these uh, small animals that can eat uh, your, your, your produce. So introduce our stands. So usually our stand, our uh, stand, our our as in O double O double L O W L, our. You know, yeah, yeah. Our. Yeah, yeah. I got it. Thank you. Yeah, that that large bed. So you you put a a pole which is uh, approximately three meters high, then you put a stand on top of it, just a small stand, so that the owl will come and land on that stand. So you introduce that. It's, it's, it's one of the controls which is used by uh, most commercial farmers. It, it started in, in Israel there, and it works very well. Thanks, thanks. That's very helpful. Thank you, Zolila. You, you okay? Yeah, I'm cool. Okay, cool. Uh, Eugene, do you have a question? Eugene? Okay, guys, um, are there any questions that you guys would like to ask our speakers? Um, going once, going twice, just request to be a speaker and then, you know, fire away. Like, ask any question that you feel like maybe I haven't asked or something that you really want to know um, with, when it comes to, you know, being a manager or when it comes to cabbage production. So if there are any questions, just request to become a speaker um whilst our speakers are here let's make the most of their beautiful brains and pick them and pick them as much as we can so anyone with a question okay i'm going to yeah i'm just going to leave it on for five minutes and then the offer is closed you guys so, Munya, um, you know, thank you so much for actually joining us um, this evening. We really appreciate your time and your efforts. What are some of your parting words in terms of, um, you know, being a farmer and just give us tips and advice and some positivity? Okay, uh, thanks, Kuku. Uh, what I believe is uh, if you're young, you have all the energy and all the vigor. To, to drive to, to greater heights. You know, when you start farming at a, at a young age, you, you tend to experience all the challenges earlier. And, you know, in doing, in doing we learn. So you perfect as you go. It's, it's, it's not always uh, you start by running. Sometimes you need to crawl and you start uh, walking by leaps and bounds. Then you can finally get all the energy to run. The race is never easy. It needs a lot of patience. So what I believe in... And, and, and young farmers is to have a lot of patience when they start these enterprises. The journey is never easy, but it needs a lot of patience for you to, to drive to maturity. I, I, I believe if we do proper planning now at, at a young age, we're going to be food secure for, 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 for the rest of our lives. You know, we are our own bosses if, if you are doing farming. You know, you, you, you choose what you need to, to produce, how to produce, when to produce, and you have less pressure of, of what you're going to do next because you, you already have planned in, in, in the earlier 
in the earlier times. So what I believe is, let's start now. Let's not procrastinate and, uh, in doing we learn. And all the best to, to, to all the young farmers who are willing to move with this route. Thank you so much, Munya. Um, I will take that to heart when you are saying that we need to basically push and push and push and now because, you know, we take it for granted, but groundwork and experience is, is really the, the cash and the money and the currency of, of farming. So you guys as young farmers, we need, to, we need to push, we need to learn, we need to go through all these obstacles because it's only going to make us better farmers. So thank you so much, Munya, for that. Um, Pumeza, are you here? I hope you're here. Um, if you are, please just leave us with beautiful parting words, advices, or tricks, or tips, or any secrets that you want to share. Now's your chance. Pumeza, hello. Yeah, guys, our speakers are having serious network problems. Like, I'm trying to get them on, but it, it's really real. It's, it's, a, it's a network problem. So I can see that there aren't any questions from the floor. So what I am going to do is I am going to... Okay, there is a question. Uh, Musembi. Musembi, hello. Yes, hello. Hi. Yeah, hi. Sorry, I've actually come in late. Yes, you have, but it's okay. Yeah, so mine is just a quick one. I wanted to ask about um, the herbicides, pesticides, maybe fertilizer, should, mostly the herbicides and pesticides. Should the application be done uh, in, like, let's say, a preventive way before you maybe actually even spot the disease or maybe test? Uh, Can you hear me? Hello. Hi, Musembi. Yes, we can hear you. Mala, uh, Mala so, uh, I just want to ask uh, one question. Eh? Uh, I'm more To, okay. Uh, um, uh, livestock production. So last year, Lipedi, um, hi, Lipedi. Could you just maybe mute your mic and let's do maybe one question at a time? Musembi has already asked a question. It is intercrop. So I, I just want something that. I... Okay. Um. I, I don't know what's happening. I can plant um, the winter. Okay, because, guys. What I'm going to uh, do my is just... I'm going to just... Focus is more into, into livestock. So, so last year, I started to plant pumpkins in summer. Uh, Mr. Lipedi, could you please mute your mic? Uh, we're going to get to you now. Let's just cover one question at a time, please. All right. I hope he could hear me. Is it Musembi, I uh, we, uh, uh, we in the space where I put in the way and actually I think he has a network issue. I don't know if he can hear us. I think it's a network issue. I, I'm trying to mute but I'm also struggling. Um okay guys, please just bear with me for a sec. But Musembi, just to answer your question, we actually did cover um herbicides in terms of when to to apply your herbicides and it was advised that when you're dealing with herbicides you have to apply it before you plant. So I don't know if that would answer your question. Okay, it was kind of general. Also for the Pesticides, should you apply like after you see the pests or can you do it as a preventive measure before maybe you see them? We also covered that, but briefly, I think Munya can maybe just give you a brief answer. Okay, prevention is always better than cure. You know, when you do your religious sprays, you come up with a spray program which allows you to spray 
uh, before you, you you see anything. So it's very, very much wiser for you to spray religiously. Like you have a, you have a, you have a fungicide and an insecticide each and every week at a seven-day interval whereby you, you spray uh, consistently without skipping so that uh, you, you won't face any challenges. So when you prevent, it's, it's cheaper and it's, it, it has less headaches than trying to, to come in with uh, curative uh, fungicides or come up with uh, heavy pesticides. So when you come up with the heavy pesticides, it, it, it comes into your budget now. It becomes very expensive. So your cost of production will go up when you use uh, heavy chemicals like uh, Ambligo and most of these uh, belt, you name it. These, these are the chemicals which are there to, 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 to help you recover are, are very expensive compared to those ones that you use for prevention. So prevention is better than cure. You have uh, preventives more than uh, having curatives. Thank you, Munya. Uh, Musembi, I hope that um, answers or covers your general question. Yes. We're going to move on to um, Clarence now. Clarence, do you have a question? Hi, Gugu. Yes, I do. Um, uh, good evening to the speakers. Um, I just wanted to uh, grow cabbages three times in a year. Uh, I think South African weather is, is basically like most of southern uh part of africa so you've got that rainy season you've got the cold season now and you've got the summer so i'm given to understand one can actually grow cabbages in these three uh types of uh, weather so how does it then uh compare from season to season in terms of profitability and the cost of production uh, if one was to grow in each one of these from their experience, that is to say. And then uh, if you've heard me speak, I'm not sure our speakers that uh, you bring Google uh, aware that they are actually speaking to a lot of us who are not just in South Africa. So I struggled with, is it Sesulu or Seswana that they spoke? Uh, please forgive me, but I would have loved to understand what they were talking about. So it's thinking that perhaps we could encourage them to, you know, be aware that they're speaking to an audience uh, from far and wide away from SA. Thanks a lot. Mpumeza, are you here? Hello. Hello, are you here? Did you hear Clarence's uh, question? This is why in network is mooring me. Yo. Yeah, no, it is. And I do understand. I really do understand. You guys keep trying to come back and it, it's, it's mooring everyone. So it's fine. Yeah, what was the question? Uh, Okay, let's give you also a chance to answer. So Clarence wants to know, um, he's saying that he knows that you can plant cabbage three times a year. So he wants to know in terms of the cost of production, how much he wants to know in prices, basically, when we speak of cost of production and um, profits. Yeah, basically, no. how does it compare from season to season? For instance, I grow my cabbage in the rainy season. Uh, how does it compare in terms of production costs with the ones I'll plant or grow in the summer? That kind of scenario, yeah. Um, let's do this because I can't hear the the question properly. So my brother here, uh, please uh, confirm for me. So my brother wants to know um, the comparisons between producing cabbages in summer and winter uh, in terms of costs of production. Yes, that's yes. his question. Oh, hey, my brother, uh, from from where I am, producing cabbages costs more in in summer, mainly because of the prevalence of diseases and uh, and pests. So, um, the costs go more 
uh, I think it costs more on the chemical side of it because now there are more diseases, there are more pests in summer. The conditions in summer just conducive for uh, for the growth uh, of pests and diseases. So uh, what we've noticed is that we have produced uh, cabbages last season in summer. Uh, spraying those cabbages uh, costs more than it does now because you see our, our regular spray intervals in summer uh, it's 10 days it's a 10 days interval so in winter it's like 20 days now it means that you're spending double the, the amount of chemicals that you you, you use and foliar feeds you, uh, that you would have used uh, in summer so in summer it, it, it costs more on, on, on the chemical uh, side of it and also when it comes to fertilizers, we use more fertilizers in summer because it rains often. So leaching, uh, the, the, the more leaching is happening in, in summer than in winter. So we use more fertilizer in summer than we would have used in, in, in winter. So yeah, I, I would say from us, I'm going to use just my case, we found cabbages to, to be costing more to produce in summer than in winter but now let's go to the price of selling the actual product because in summer a cabbage is selling for more than the, than it sells in, in in winter because the demand is higher because there are less people producing cabbages in summer because they're scared of dealing with all these things you understand because it's very risky to produce in summer so the price is very beautiful for us in in winter so it's justifiable to to, to produce uh, cabbages in summer because you, you get to sell it for, for 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 more price so yeah okay clarence i hope that answers your question perfect, perfect. but but, but have Ubune, another one. let me let me say let me sneak out uh, let me let me sneak uh this part in eh? okay is that it's riskier to produce cabbages uh, in summer, it's not always about you gonna sell. You'd find that you end up not even selling without you. You put all that effort, then you can be like, okay, no, I'm gonna be selling the cabbages in three weeks. Then you have hail. You understand? So you've invested so much into those cabbages, then you end up not getting everything because the previous year, that's what we have. We we had we had a, um, a damage, a hail damage uh, that was worth 1.2 million. Just the hail damage, we thought that was going to be a home run, but because of the weather conditions and other things that are unforeseen, uh, we ended up not making money. So it has to be up to you if you are willing to risk producing uh, cabbages in summer and everything. But you have to know that you can invest all that money, double the fertilizer, double uh, the, the, the chemicals and everything, but you might still not make anything. But if God blesses you and you are able to make it out, uh, or out of the production season and you pass until the selling stage, then uh, you're going to be making hell of a, uh, a lot of money that we have, you would have made in, 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 in the summer. In fact, you can, make, you can make close to double what you would have made in winter. Sorry. Okay. Uh, I also think uh, farming is, is, is a gambling. It's a gamble. So you, you need to spread the risk. Whenever you, you choose to be a farmer, you already are a risk taker. You know these. There's the probability of success and the probability of failure. So in most cases, if you choose to, to do cabbage, just spread the risk and do in both timelines. So if you're doing winter, just also doing summer so that you, you, you spread your risk. Sometimes you, you win, sometimes you lose. But when you spread your risk, uh, the, the probability of success is higher. Say uh, you're producing in summer, you have to have an understanding of the variety that you're going to, to be doing, like Optima. Optima is a, is, a, is a cabbage with soft roads, plague roads, and all these other road tolerances. So when you can win against uh, soft road and black road in, in the rain season, you, 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 you are set for, for, for a, a, a higher price in, in, in market, and you are likely to make more money when, when you, you do this risk with, uh, with caution. So yeah, risking is, is, is okay, but it, it also needs to come with caution. Just understand the variety that you're going to do when you're doing in a rainy season. So cabbage can do well in, in, in winter. There, there are less challenges, less problems, but uh, you know flooding. Most farmers will be doing cabbage, so the prices will, will be lower. So when you, when you spread the risk now and do in both timelines, you can, you can minimize the risk of failure. 
That's, that's what I believe. So just just do in, in, in both timelines, in, in, in the rain season and in winter. Thank you so much, uh, speakers. Clarence, I'm sure that yeah. gives you an abundance of, you know, what you need to know. Indeed. I have um, one last one, if you can all right. allow. No, we have to move on to the next one because of Great. time. Okay. 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 All right. Um, Peter, do you have a question? Uh, good evening, Google Later. I've just got two comments on uh, Munya's um, statements that he made. And uh, he says, you know, when speaking about farming, he says, you know, farming... One needs to take risks, we but need. you know, as a farmer myself, huh? um, I can just say, and I, I truly believe that farmers are people of hope, and farmers are people that never give up and continue, and uh, therefore, I always salute farmers. Um, as a farmer myself, I think we as farmers, we are very, we can go through lots of stuff, and we could have so much trouble in life, but we always go the extra mile and make it out the other side. So that's my good glitch, just my just my ten cents into, you know, you're gonna take risks in life, especially on farming, but just continue to carry on. Never stop. Um, if you're a real farmer, you've got hope and you've got resilience and preservatance. So you'll always go out. So uh, to all the farmers out here, I wish you everything on the best and never ever stop doing your best. And farmers is such an integral part of South Africa um, for our economy for our security and food security and never doubt what you're doing for this country where you guys are all doing amazing. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much, Peter. We really appreciate your words of encouragement and your words of wisdom. And yeah, Munya, like you said, you know, farming is really a profession of hope and we are all here because we, we believe, you know, we believe in um feeding the nation. We believe in contributing to the food systems and food security, and we care. We do this for the, the passion and the love. So unfortunately, guys, we have went overboard um, when it comes to time. So um, I think I wanted our speakers just to, you know, say their quick uh, final words, but I'm seeing that obviously network is a problem. So I, I will thank them separately um, after this farm spaces. But to everyone who's listened and joined us today, thank you so much uh, for being here. We host farm spaces every Mondays and every Thursdays at 6 p.m. Cent Central African time. So join us next week is another topic when we get to share and speak comfortably and be in such a safe space where our questions get answered by amazing, amazing, amazing farmers. So, Munya, I really want to say thank you so much to you and your expertise. You really held it down for us. We really appreciate you. Um, Pigo is here. I'm sure he's having network problems. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate you as well for your expertise. And Pumeza is not here, but thank you, Pumeza. I will say my thank yous also um, separately. So that brings us to the end of Farm Spaces, guys. Till next week, Monday, same time, same place. And if you want to catch all the episodes, um, I will post the subscription on YouTube. And also, Fatsuna Lady, she's here. She, she records our sessions. So thank you so much, guys. Let's keep learning. Let's keep growing. Let's keep doing this. And for me, it is good night.